Ben, are you excited to ride in here after we fix it up? Yep. Wow. <laughs> you guys. Yep, yep, yep. This is intense. <laughs> We are expecting our 11th child and we currently have a 15 passenger van, but the problem with a 15 passenger van is that you are really packed in. When you have all of those seats in, uh, there is no storage space in the back. I mean, it's just really tight. It's doable, of course, it's what people do. But Jason and I had a dream of owning a shuttle bus. <laughs> Because we're crazy like so that. So it was my dream, and then I infected her, so yes. Yeah, I couldn't get out of my mind. It was like, wow, you know, we have family that lives like an hour and a half, two hours away. Wouldn't it be nice to have so much space that the kids aren't like on top of each other and we have room to put things without, you know, putting a trailer on the back? I mean, right. it just sounded so glamorous. And so Jason started the hunt because he loves hunting for vehicles. Yeah. And things that I was surprised about as we kept looking was um, that there were certain thing that's, things that were hard to find when it came to shuttle buses. One was having a passenger seat for me to sit in. Well, yes. So one of the prerequisites for, for us was that it wouldn't be too long. Mm -hmm. um, and we preferred, I preferred to have a diesel um, because it kind of fits in line with the big plan of what we what we have going on with the you know the rest of things and so um, you know it was hard to come by a diesel shuttle bus that was in decent shape that um, had a passenger seat um, or we could make one you know I, I it was just really hard there just weren't they weren't out there we also preferred windows that could open in the back right um, and and so like some of them have the windows that open up top, which is cool that you can open them, you know. So it it was like we kept not, yeah, kept finding that we couldn't check all the boxes of what we would consider prerequisites. Mm -hmm. And we definitely didn't want to go over ten thousand dollars. That was right. like our cap, and right. we'd prefer to be much below that. So there were just so many factors, but they finally. Um, Grandpa actually found right. this shot of us down in Georgia, and I can link that video so you can see the whole process of going to get it. It was quite an ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> and as is with a lot of, was this on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace? Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Well, as it goes with a lot of purchases, um, you don't know 100% what you're getting. You're trusting a person's word, and so traveling eight hours like you had to do. Almost nine. You know, it's it's just a chance and yeah. so there were some things wrong uh, with the bus that we weren't disclosed and we didn't know about going into it right so. but he was down there and we talked over the phone weighed the pros and cons and decided this was a good fit for us it was worth doing so we have a project here because we like projects and we are going to try to make this uh, very comfortable and user friendly for our family um, for traveling medium distances and long distances um, and maybe just uh, going to the grocery store I don't know we'll see how this goes so we're uh, the, the seats in here we're going to reconfigure and so it came with 25 we're going to take out 10 um, in doing so, we'll be able to register it uh, in a way that will not require a CDL license, which is good. That way, if um, any of us want to drive it that have a driver's license, can, as long as they feel comfortable. So, um, we're, we're talking about some of the things that we want to do, and um, there's a, because of the, the fact that it's a commercial vehicle right now, uh, to get it to where we don't have to have commercial insurance, you need to register it as an RV. And to do so, it's actually pretty simple. You have to have like four things of this long list of, uh, well not long list, but a list of things um, that would make an RV like you would e expect. You know, like um, um, having uh, heating and cooling. So an air conditioner and a heater. Like having uh, water, um, a portable self-contained, uh, a bathroom of some sort, sink, um, AC power. Um, so anyway, long story short, 
there there are four things that we want to do to it. It's because it's just a very old system, so it's gonna be difficult. What's so funny? Where are you going with the seats? Out the back of Okay, great. And well, where are they gonna go then? Right. We have to think about this. If it rains tonight, rains tomorrow. That sort of thing matters, right? So what I want to do, boys, we've taken out how many seats? Three? That's the third. Good, and they don't smell, so. Well, I don't, it's all going to have a residual moldy smell. And so we'll have to clean them. And it's okay, I've got a plan. It's like, um, vinegar and a shop vac and some, um, maybe a steam cleaner. This stuff's in bad shape. This may have to disappear. So the current plan is to pull up all the carpeting and the floor, maybe replace some of the sides with wood, and pull up the paneling in the ceiling and replace it with wood. We're also going to be removing 10 seats, so we have 15 seats instead of 25. We're going to be pulling out any that have rips, maybe moisture or mold damage. Oh my, oh, you got it? Mm -hmm. nope. You got it. Mm -hmm. It's got it. Well, it's 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 like this window gives me a whole lot of visibility anyway. Unless we just turn it this way. Let's go to the Yes. You can oh, yeah, take that off. Take all those, those screws one right there. Be tonight. careful not to touch or poke. I am. I know, but okay. if you do, we want to save this. Whatever you yes. get. Okay. Got this stuff? Because I got it too. Oh, wait. Okay. This is. Wait. Okay, now hop down. Oh. Fire. Here, right. Sam, go get them. All right. Now yeah, go no, no, out. No. Remember what we did last time? Uh, I'm just standing one? here. Yeah, Tell me if you want me to do something. <laughs> yeah, Elsie, rest it on the chairs. Yeah. Is Great. That a snake? What? Wait, a snake? You won't. Well, uh, push it back. Don't come on, Faye. Leave it in there, Jermaine. You want to go out and grab this end? Here. Hold on. Wait for Elsie to come. Jermaine, grab the middle. I got Jermaine. the middle. Jermaine, middle. He's waiting on me. Where? I got it. Keep on going. We're putting Jermaine, it come on the middle. more. All right. This is where um, some small four legged things had made a home. and So, um, you know, get that stuff out of there because that mm -hmm. smells, of course. We call it uh, fixtures down, out, and uh, took the DVD uh, TVs off, um, the wiring, you know, trying to, while we're doing this, like, do we need this? Is this is this going to line up with the end goal? Um, you know, and try to handle it accordingly. Because one of the things for me that's the hardest about my projects that I feel like I'm getting a little better at is trying to manage the stuff that I'm taking out better so that one it's somewhat organized when I go to put it back together and or done and out of here so I don't have to touch it more than once so if it's leaving it's gone right away mm -hmm. I'm either burning it or throwing it away or whatever needs to be done so um, and then you know not demoing too much making sure is this really what I want to take down or take out so right now above the uh, pilot and co-pilot if you will their positions is still the carpeted stuff and from what I understand, even though the, the, the smell might still be there from like a musty, it's not damaged or moldy or mildewy. It's sort of like a separate part. It is. Of yeah, the it is. You so, have this body and right. then you have that. They call it a cutaway. So the front part of the vehicle is actually a van that they cut away and then added on, on the frame of like a dually truck, if you will. Um, a body, you know, a fiberglass body with some metal framing around it, and, and uh, well, I guess it's it's also aluminum. So um, yeah, so you know, it, it you smash these two things together, and so you have, you know, kind of like RV or shuttle bus um, layout, and then you have like a regular old van up front. So one of the reasons that we are going to put more than just seats back in is because there will be a lot of wasted space in order to drive this vehicle without a special CDL, CDL driver's license, the, driver's um, license. the cutoff for vehicles is 15 seats. Right. So we won't be putting all of the seats back in because we want to, at this point, keep it to that 
minimum, which right. means that there's going to be a lot of empty space right. that could just be empty or we could use it for something. It's basically about six and a half feet after the back of the 15 passengers um, to the rear of the vehicle that we'll have. Six and a half feet by, I think it's eight feet, or give or take eight feet, maybe it's like seven and a half. When we go somewhere, like we go down to the Ozarks and we borrowed an RV, a little RV. <laughs> Actually, it was, it was a, about this size. No, it was shorter. <laughs> it was it's a it was a it's a Dodge or a Mercedes uh -huh. Sprinter. But very nice, very yeah. nice vehicle. We, we wouldn't want to be in it long term, but for, Not for two a large nights, family. it worked fine. Right. And so right. you know, we're thinking when we go back again, what could we do to make this usable? So the plan is to put those fifteen seats back in and start building up like bunk situations mm -hmm. and figuring out. So we have some general plans. Yes. But Joe and I have been like plotting and scheming. We've and been going back and I forth. I really think that we need to get the seats in before we start making any kind of decisions. Because the loose kind of idea that we had talked through initially was to have uh, structures in place that we will be able to put bunks, bunk beds over those. Uh, it's barking over those seats so that um, kids could sleep in here on those overnights all the way back lining both walls mm -hmm. and in the back there would still be room for a large air mattress that we could sleep on um, just trying to figure out how to make this work Best in a small space, space. Right. and then we can even do the driver's passenger side where with we're another putting, bed you know, some small kids in there mm -hmm. um, so at this point um, everything has mostly been stripped out the chairs have been cleaned and are being stored elsewhere like he told you uh, and our friend Craig, who is a flooring guy, yeah. and he came six years ago and gave us and installed for us the flooring in our little house, yeah. which has held up amazingly. It's this industrial it's a luxury, luxury vinyl, vinyl. Tile. super yeah. strong. Really nice. And when he found out that we bought this, he said, let me come over and, and put flooring in it. Yeah. So this is my friend Craig, who just told me not to, no. <laughs> All right. So we have my friend Craig over. Um, he's actually our friend. So we've had uh, a friendship since before I knew Julie, right? Yeah. So we used to go biking a lot. What else did we do? We got in trouble. Um, you gave me a dirt bike once. That was probably the best gift you've ever gotten me. <laughs> but he's back today though, uh, helping us with the flooring. So you know, we had uh, some rotten floors. Joe helped us with the repairing and replacing so we got this is some self-leveling stuff right now getting it to where it's uh, a little bit more even and then we're going to be putting in this stuff right here which is luxury vinyl tile we decided to keep the rubber mat that goes down the center of the bus because that'll take the brunt of wet muddy right well it, it it's really durable I mean, mm -hmm. actually really good for being wet. Like it doesn't slip and slide. Yeah, it has and a And that vinyl, it. we know from when our kitchen is wet, like it's a uh, ice rink, you know? So mm -hmm. I was like, uh, I was just gonna have a little landing of this stuff because, you know, we, we had enough material to do the, the whole thing. And I was like, man, I wanna go all the way back stay because it's in, it's in decent shape. Yeah, So yeah. So he installed flooring. It looks fantastic. On the, sides, on the two beautiful. sides. Okay, yeah. so this is woohoo! This is the first new thing that's gone in the bus. Yes. What do you think? The bus is yeah. on it. Oh, walking on it. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> walking on it. So the next thing that's going to happen is Jason's going to do a better waterproofing. Um, yeah, so the, that all this wonderful work we do doesn't go to waste. So. We want to make sure that it's totally watertight going forward. Mm -hmm. um, and then taking the windows out, and what are you going to do with the windows before you put them back in? So um, there's a, a spot above the windows right here starting to flake and it's dirty and it needs to be resealed. And so basically while we're touching it, we're going to go ahead and just uh, knock off the loose stuff and then give it a coat of paint. Uh, I know it won't match exactly, but it's separated enough from the bottom part of the bus that you probably won't see too much of it mm -hmm. when you're back at like 10 feet or whatever. And so we decided to, to clean that up and then reseal the windows. So they come out kind of split. There's a frame on the inside that holds them together. And, and so they fit into the hole and um, we're going to take those out. And I, I bought a bunch of Volcom 
uh, caulk. It's a polyurethane caulk that stays tacky, if you will, pliable, and uh, so it's a what we call 50-year caulk, and that will help to seal up our windows. And you know, there, there's a, there's a. I'm sure that we're going to continue to run into things. And, and as I had mentioned before about other things, it's a really large struggle for me to not do this 100 percent. Meaning, like 80 percent is good enough. Mm -hmm. What is it supposed to be? This is not going to win any beauty pageants. Right. It needs to just be safe, That's reliable, right. and none of the work that we've done hopefully gets eroded by us not doing work. So you know, we're trying to do any prep work that needs to be done to preserve the work that we've done. Mm -hmm. So. We're also wanting to remove the tinting from the windows. It's got this Which I kind of started purple. doing, yeah. So the, one of the, the first windows over here is, is kind of where we like it. Um, it's, it's wavy, bubbly, peeling, cracking. Um, Which will make it easier to remove. Kind of. It's a pain. If you guys know any tips, uh, you know, people say heat gun, but it takes a lot of time using a mm -hmm. heat gun. Do you have any faster ideas for us? We're about speed here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, razor speed knife and, and, you know, there's maybe alcohol or something like that. There's almost two gun. layers of tints. There is. There, actually, there's three layers of tint. So there's a factory, um, it seems like a factory tint that's actually in the glass, which is nice. Then there's one layer. Actually, in some cases, I found even more. That. that they kept layering Yeah, they up. kept doing it. So and at the final some point one is time, that weird purple color? It is, yeah. It's ugly. Whew. It's hideous. Anything else? Well, we're getting close to being able to put it back on the road. So once we get the seats back in and the walls and ceilings figured out and sealing it. And, and the exhaust and situation the exhaust repaired. And the battery and the... Um, pain and that, <laughs> and the insurance and the registration and the, we're close. I mean, you know, for a good two years we'll be having it on the road, or two weeks or two months. We'll see. If you didn't have to work full time. You know. Oh yeah, there's that. Yeah. Anyway, stay tuned. Um, this is where we're at, and we'll see how much we get done. Yeah. Until we see you again. Thank you guys for your support.